On today's show, it's a crossover with Lindsey Crosby of Locked On MLB Prospects. We talk about Jason Dominguez. We talk about Anthony Volpe and Oswald and Oswaldo, Cabrera and Peraza. And who else do we talk about? Oh, yeah, that guy, Aaron Judge. It's all coming up next on Locked On Yankees. <laughs> You are Locked On Yankees, your daily New York Yankees podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Happy Thursday, Yankee fans. This is Stacey Gasulius, the host of Locked On Yankees, which is part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. We'd like to thank you for making us your first listen every day. We're free and available on all platforms, including Apple, Odyssey, Spotify, and Stitcher. We're also on YouTube. You can watch and subscribe to us. You can click the thumbs up button. And if you hit the bell, it'll let you know when our videos are live. So... As I said, this is a crossover with Lindsey Crosby of Locked On MLB Prospects. He has a mea culpa about Jason Dominguez. So let's not waste any time and get into it. It is a Locked On MLB crossover with Lindsey Crosby, host of Locked On MLB Prospects, and Stacey Gutsulius, host of Locked On Yankees. And uh, Stace, I have to apologize to all of your listeners. Uh, last time I was on your show... I, I talked a little shade about Jason Dominguez, and I, I think I owe them an apology. Uh, has anybody complained to you about that yet? No. Surprisingly, no. <laughs> no one has complained about that yet, which I'm, I'm very, yeah, I'm surprised about that because Yankee yeah. fans like to stick it to people who are wrong about things. Yeah, we talked right before the trade deadline, and I kind of, I, I, I had some words for Jason Dominguez. I think that I, I talked about him probably not being as good as we thought he was going to be. And in his defense, when you're compared to Bo Jackson and Mickey Mantle, it's kind of unrealistic, unrealistic expectations. But uh, since he was promoted to high A Hudson Valley, he's practically become a completely different player. He's turned it around in just about every single facet. And so I'm eating the crow. I'm coming on your show and I'm saying, Jason Dominguez, while he's not going to be Mickey Mantle, Jason Dominguez looks like he's going to be a very good big leaguer. Um, so I think I was wrong in writing him off so early. I'm glad that you disagreed with me and you argued in the in the episode that you should not have traded him at the trade deadline. Right. <laughs> yeah. So, okay. So he spent 75 games in low A Tampa. And that's where I was looking at him and that's where I had the critiques. Okay. 265, 373, 440 was the slash line. Nine home runs. 89 strikeouts to 46 walks. It was a 27% strikeout rate. Okay. He spent 40 games with high A Hudson Valley, ended up being the South Atlantic League player of the week to end the season. But 306, 397, 510, six home runs, 34 strikeouts to 23 walks. So dropped his strikeout rate to 18%. And looking at a lot of what he did, um, he fixed literally almost every single facet of his game. Uh, his defense got significantly better. That was something where he was seen as having double plus speed. When we saw him last year, he looked like he had slowed down a little too much. Uh, you know, his, his speed is starting to show again in the outfield and on the base paths. Uh, he was under 200 batting average as a righty last year to the point where some of us were asking, should he just drop switch hitting altogether? Mm -hmm. uh, he's back you know, significantly above that, uh, brought that up a lot. Um, his reads and his his reactions to the ball in center field are very good. The routes are a work in progress, but uh, defensively he looks back to normal. I think the big thing that I noticed from talking to people uh, in the organization, people who, who cover those, uh, the South Atlantic League a little closer than I do, is the maturity has really been what's come around for him. He And he even admitted that he understands – working out of a slump now versus making excuses and and finding reasons to explain away uh, what is going on and why it's not your fault. Right. And I think that that's something that takes a long time for a lot of players to learn. Some of them never do. Mm. And for him to to figure it out at age 19 years old, you guys have to be excited about the the 
future possibilities of a Jason Dominguez. Definitely. And you hit the nail on the head there with the things that he's fixed, the things that he's improved on, and the maturity at the young age. That's what you want in a player. And you want someone to be accountable instead of making excuses for themselves. Because you see the guys doing that in the majors, and it's just like, no, you don't want to see that. So I'm glad they didn't trade him. Glad that people didn't give up on him. Um, because, you know, I, we've known this throughout history of baseball. You never know what's going to happen with these prospects. And, mm -hmm. you know, going back to the age 19, that's just, I think that's too young to give up on someone. And I like that he's heading in the right direction. It's very positive. It's nice. Yeah. And I love what they did with him as far as, so, so they're one of the organizations and I'm, they, the Yankees are one of the organizations that have done, they have reimagined the September call up back in the good old days. You remember the roster expanded to 40 guys and you called up everybody and they're all sitting on the big league bench. And since they've changed that now and you only get a max of 28, like one position player and one um, and one pitcher, what a lot of teams have done, and Jason Dominguez was the guy for the Yankees, is they're taking their lower level prospects and promoting them up for the final week of the season. So Jason actually got five games with double A Somerset. Uh, at the very end of the season. Now, slash line wasn't great, 105, 227, 368. It's a five-game sample. The jump to double-A is the toughest jump short of entering the big leagues. So I get it, but he hit a home run. He hit a triple. He stole a base. Had a lot of things that can that can set you up for success and kind of give him an idea of this is what I need to work on going into the offseason. This is what I need to focus on. But look, like, I got five games, I hit a home run, I stole a base, I hit a triple. Like, I can do it at this level uh, and kind of prime in the pump for next year. And I think it's a really cool thing that the Yankees have done that. Yeah, yeah. Um, I actually had mentioned his first game because we were also keeping track of Harrison Bader because he was rehabbing with Somerset. Mm -hmm. And I saw that both Dominguez and Hardman went 0 for 5 in that one game. It was 11 innings. It was when the Yankees were playing the Red Sox. Uh, Somerset was playing the Red Sox affiliate, and it was a very similar type of situation. And I told Yankee fans to, you know, it's fine that Dominguez went 0 for 5. It's a jump going from A to double. It's it's all mm -hmm. it's all good. So <laughs> yeah, and it's it's small sample size, but I'm glad he got the exposure and just the information that the team is going to be able to take from that five game sample is going to set him up for the off season as far as figuring out what he needs to work on, you know, in the cage, what he needs to work on in the field and all of that. So I love it. Another guy that got a brief, a little bit longer, but a brief look at the next level um, was, was Anthony Volpe. So he was sent up to Scranton Wilkes bar for the final two weeks of the season 254, 323, 407, hit two home runs, stole four bases. And so it's, I mean, you've got, and I'm going to get to them in the next segment, but you've got Cabrera and Peraza up now. You've got Volpe, who had a taste of AAA. Um, I'm, I'm really excited to see what all of these guys are doing and then specifically to see where Anthony Volpe is going to end up. Um, it's something where he, he can play short. I think Oswald Peraza is is already there and may or may not be the shortstop and it's this is a whole conversation for the next segment but um what are what are yankees fans saying there about anthony volpe like what are they thinking he's going to end up being or where is he going to end up in their minds i think they're hoping between peraza and volpe that they'll have a double play combo for mm -hmm. like years to come I don't know where that puts Glaber, of course. <laughs> and Glaber Torres is making a case for himself because he's really picked things up in the last couple of weeks. Um, has another RBI tonight, and he's he's really picking things up and making the Yankees have kind of a difficult choice here because, you know, I think the Yankees were kind of hoping that they would just be able to kind of slot Volpe and Peraza in at some point and maybe not as quickly as they're maybe heading toward because it looks mm -hmm. like it's going to be a lot quicker for those two to be with the Yankees. But yeah, Yankee fans are excited that they didn't give up on any of those guys during the trade deadline, that some of the trades they got done, not that they've worked out that well, but they didn't have to give up that much to get the guys. So yeah, Yankee fans are excited that these top prospects are still around yeah. and doing can, well. Can Gliber Torres, you think he can play third? Cause I'm, I'm thinking about Anthony Volpe and, 
I don't necessarily know if his arm is strong enough to put him at third reliably. You usually want somebody, I, I'd give his arm a fringe to an average, you know, mm. so a little bit below where you want it to be at third. Is Gleyber Torres a candidate to play third base? Maybe? I don't, I don't know. I don't that's know the, how. That's the tough part is you've got three guys for two yeah. spots, I feel like, because nobody really wants to th- take third. I, I think Peraza could do it. Peraza can play anywhere in the infield, though, yeah. but but I, I'm, I'm a little worried that it's almost a waste of him to put him at third right? because he's such a good defensive shortstop. You, um, would you prefer Peraza at short and Volpe at second? or uh, if, I, if I had a perfect world, I'm putting Peraza at short. I think Peraza is probably the best defensive shortstop in the high minor. Well, was in the high minors. He's at the big league level now. But I think Peraza is probably the best, the best shortstop uh, that you have of these guys, of, of Cabrera and Volpe and Peraza. And so I'd put Peraza at second simply so you don't have to test the arm. The speed is fine, especially not having the shift next year. It's helpful to to have his range at second. And his bat obviously profiles really well at second. It's just figuring out third plate, third base is tough. And, you know, Torres is around. He's not a free agent until 2025. So you've got a lot of time to figure that out. And, uh, and speaking of a lot of time to figure things out, I've had a lot of time to figure out Physically, how getting older has changed my body. You know, a little bit of a dad bod here, work, you know, wor- working on some of that. And so I'm glad that our next sponsor has has hopped onto the Lockdown Podcast Network. Nugenics is uh, a, a supplement that contains man-boosting key ingredients like testo- uh, testophen. And the idea here is this is something that's been validated in five different clinical trials to boost free testosterone levels in men. And because Nugenics Total T boosts free testosterone that the aging process has been taken away, you'll feel stronger and leaner with more energy and more drive and more passion too. And your partner will definitely notice the difference. So get a complimentary bottle of Nugenics Total T when you text MLB to 231231. So you can text now and get a bottle of Nugenics Thermo as well, their most powerful fat incinerator ever with key ingredients to help you get back in shape fast. And again, it's absolutely free. So text MLB to 231231. That's MLB to 231231. Terms and conditions do apply. Okay, so we we briefly talked about um, Peraza and Cabrera. Can we can we get on that for a second? Because I have I have I have some issues here. <laughs> um, okay, so Cabrera came up. And he's played a lot of right field, which I'm I'm fine with. Uh, it, it's most of your non-shortstop position players or non-catcher position players probably started off at some point in their life as shortstop. So it's fine that he's playing right field. Uh, when Rizzo was out, they had him taking balls at first. Um, I okay, he has that's, a plus. But arm. that's in fairness, that's only because DJ LeMahieu was injured. Because if if they were both True. not injured at the same time, they wouldn't have. But I think it's because they think Cabrera can pretty much play anywhere. So they were kind of trying to see if he could. But yeah, <laughs> that's that's what I was going to say was like when I like I talked about this on 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 Locked on Movie Prospects last Thursday. And at that point, Cabrera only had like 91 innings in the outfield and he was already plus seven on DRS with four outfield assists. And so like, he's already statistically one of the best outfielders on this team. Yeah. As far as like as uh, run prevention and, and outfield assists. And I feel like, I mean, he, he was in right. Now that Bader's back, uh, Judge is in right, and and uh, and he, Cabrera's over in left. I feel like, I mean, his arm's probably a little wasted in left, but you can't move Judge off of right. Judge is doing fantastic things right now. And so he, he's played second, he's played third, he's played short, he's played right field, he's played left field. Um, so he's spent some time just about everywhere. But Oswald Peraza has not had a chance to play nearly as much. Mm -hmm. And I'm mad about it. Yeah, you're not the only one. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Uh, The last time he started at shortstop was uh, September 17th. Mm -hmm. And, okay, so he he gets called up um, on September 2nd. And in my head, I'm thinking about what the Braves just did with Vaughn Grissom. And granted, that was because of injury and they needed him. But Von Grissom is a shortstop. He comes up, he plays second base in the, in the wake of the Ozzy Albies injury. Mm. And for the Braves, they get like 45 games of this prospect who they weren't sure if he was ready or not. 
They get to go out and watch him play every single day against MLB pitching, put him in an unfamiliar situation, and see how he acclimates. Oswald Peraza was called up September 2nd. He's played eight games. And you, why are you calling him up if he doesn't get to play? Right, right. And it's... I, uh, I don't understand it. And it's so funny because, you know, Isaiah Kiner Falefa, I don't dislike him as much as other Yankee fans do. He, <laughs> he drives me crazy because, you know, he'll throw the ball from short to first and he double pumps nearly every single time he does it. And he makes some bonehead plays. And there are some plays that he was saved on where the scorer kind of bailed his butt out. And, you know, Aaron Boone will constantly say things like, well, he's one of the best defensive shortstops in, in Major League Baseball. And everyone listening to post game with a brain is like, <laughs> that's not exactly true. And yeah, I don't know why not. they're... It's not like, okay, it's not like he's a big name shortstop who's playing horribly and they need to protect his ego. This is a guy that they traded for because they needed to, I don't know what, I, please, don't get me started on that trade. But he was, he's basically like the um, placeholder for Peraza or Volpe. So and you have the guy that you, you could replace him with just sitting there, not doing anything. And it's like, what are you doing? <laughs> I, 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 Isaiah Kiner Falefa's uh, WRC plus is like 86 this year. Mm -hmm. I mean, he is, he is 14% below average as a shortstop offensively. Yeah. And then defensively, I mean, you said it, he's not as good as Peraza. And maybe, maybe I'm missing something. Maybe he has fantastic chemistry in the clubhouse and everybody loves him, and he's the emotional center of the team. Am I missing that? Do I just not see that when I watch on TV? Yeah, I I don't know what it is. He'll occasionally have, like, like a game-tying hit. Mm -hmm. um, you know, he'll move the runners over in a big way, like, every once in a while. But, like, he always seems to – and it's, it's that stupid – He's clutch thing, but it's like, yeah, but when, the moments when he's not clutch, he's not that great. Like, you know, it's every once in a while he's clutch, but it doesn't make up for the fact that he's not clutch, you know, 80% of the time. I I don't understand it. It's why why call him up if you're not going to do anything with him? It's, he's just wasting his time here. Because even last night he was put into the game, or last night, Tuesday night, he was put into the game to pinch run for Donaldson mm -hmm. and... You know, yay, he ran around the bases when Stanton hit the Grand Slam. And sure, it's exciting that they won and everything, but that's all he did in the yeah. game. And it's such a waste of his talent. I feel bad and for And service him. time. It's a waste yeah. of his service time. I Okay, I'll give you this. I went to fan graphs and pulled the win probability for Connor Falefa. Uh, he does have a positive clutch score in 2022. Right. So he is better than the average player in a, you know, context neutral and a high leverage situation. Mm -hmm. But it's like you said, I mean, he was the placeholder for when you got Peraza. Now you have Peraza. Let Peraza play. And yeah. and the whole thing here is you're using the service clock. Uh, you're going. Obviously, you. I mean, now he's on the 40-man roster. You have to deal with all that stuff. And it just seems like it's not the best use of, of the, the time window to to evaluate him. That's right. one of those things is, I mean, Marwin Gonzalez can play shortstop. If you want to have IKF be the, the everyday guy and wait to call Peraza up until the AAA season is over or something. But, uh, it, and the other thing that drives me nuts is they waited to do it until after September 1st. So as I understand, he's also not eligible for the postseason roster. It's and I just... <laughs> It doesn't make sense to me, and it's I've I've been it's been frustrating. I wanted to complain about it, and I figured you're the best person to do it to because he's your. Oh, team. I agree with you a hundred percent. There's you know, um, there are a few people who even the first when he was first called up, it's like, why is he here if you're not going to put him in the lineup? Like everyone was so excited. Oh my God, Peraza's being called up, and then he wasn't even in the first game, and it was like, why is he here? Like, what are you doing? So he played yeah. eight times. He's played yeah. eight times in the month of September, and yeah. it's it's the. 22nd is when this is going out. What are you doing? Uh, in just a minute, we've got some conversation about Aaron Judge, potential MVP, uh, right here on Locked on MLB Prospects and Locked on Yankees. All right, and we're back. 
And Stacy, if I had to ask, I would assume that you probably come in on the Aaron Judge side of the Aaron Judge versus Shohei Otani for MVP debate, right? Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, what's it been like covering a historic season like like Aaron Judge? I mean, he's got 60, 61 home runs, something like that. We're recording in the middle of the Yankees game. He literally could hit one at any time. Yeah. Um, but... You know, over 60 home runs, he's chasing a team record. He's chasing an MLB record. Uh, we knew he had good power, but like how how unlikely is this that he has hit this many more home runs than anybody else in baseball? That's the thing. He's at 60 currently while we're recording this on Wednesday night, and the second guy is at 40. He's 20 home runs ahead of the closest guy to him throughout the league because it's Kyle Schwarber. It's just... It's unbelievable what he's doing, but it's not just the home runs because he's he's in the running for the triple crown. Also, he's hitting 317 right now. Yeah. And it's like let's see, wait. Three. Up to, oh no, 318 because he had the two doubles. So right now, while we're recording this shortly before 9 p.m. on Wednesday night, he is sitting at 318 batting average and he's in first in every other important statistical category and Cedric Mullins is leading the American League in steals with 30. Judge has 16. <laughs> and Judge is six foot seven. Yeah. Like, he's just. 280 pounds. Yeah. There are NFL defensive ends that are smaller than Aaron Judge. Yeah. And he it, is unbelievable. And I'm enjoying this so much. This was. We expected Judge to have. A crazy season once the contract stuff was going on. I was like, oh, this is going to be one of those years when guys go off because of the money situation. But mm -hmm. no one was expecting this. This is otherworldly. Plus, the balls aren't juiced and other people aren't hitting as much home runs or as much as many home runs. I do know how to speak English um, as he is. And he's it's just unbelievable, really. It's amazing. So it was it was seven years, two hundred and thirteen and a half million. I think mm -hmm. um, if if he is the winner or the first runner up for the MVP, and if he is there in contention for triple crown at the very end of the season, I mean, he while playing center field for seventy something games at two hundred and eighty pounds, yeah, uh, is that contract going to break three hundred million dollars? Like, how big is this deal going to be? Are we talking six years, three hundred million? What does this look like? Yeah, I'm not really good with the money stuff, but with the way he's playing, I think it has to break 300 million. You know, yeah. I know the years aren't going to be there because he's on the wrong side of 30. He mm -hmm. just turned 30 in April, but I think it's going to have to cross the 300 million threshold. And it's going to be really interesting to see what other teams do or what they want to try and do to lure him out of New York if Hal doesn't back up the Brinks truck. But Tyler Glass now was on Chris Rose's show earlier in the week or over the weekend, and mm -hmm. he basically was like, the Yankees need to back up the Brinks truck. <laughs> He's like, just give him a blank check. Just, well, like, what are they doing? <laughs> like, don't even delay this. Just do you it. You can't let him leave. Yeah. yeah. And, and, I mean, honestly, uh, Jason Dominguez is far enough away from the majors where you don't have a guy that just automatically slots in off the farm system to take the the, the defensive place of Aaron Judge. Never mind replace sixty home runs and a three eighteen batting average. Right. You know you've got guys in the system. I mean you've got like an Everson Pereira stuff like that who is you know on the forty man roster, but nobody that is Aaron Judge level. And I will say this as somebody who covers the MLB draft. Every incredibly tall person who plays baseball, uh, Spencer Jones is in your system right now, yep. owes a small debt of gratitude to Aaron Judge for showing that you can do this at six foot seven and you can be put together and you can be you can play baseball. O'Neal um, Cruz. O'Neal Cruz at right six now. seven is a yeah. shortstop. He's like his he's the tallest shortstop that's ever played full time. Spencer Jones, six seven. You guys drafted him, and it's I feel like we've seen more acceptance of the incredibly tall players since Aaron Judge came around and did what he's doing. Uh, that being said, if anybody tells you uh, Spencer Jones is a baby Aaron Judge, he's about 60 pounds lighter. Um, so it's the only reason they think he's they're the same is because they're both 6'7". Aaron height, Jones right. is an absolute uh, freak. 
nobody can do what Aaron Judge does, just like nobody can do what Shohei Otani does. I don't envy anybody with an MVP vote. Um, but if you don't tell the Angels guys, I'll admit on here that I think Aaron Judge probably deserves it for hitting 60 plus home runs in a non juiced ball year. Well, and also he's helping his team make the playoffs, you know, or stay in the hunt for the AL East. I mean, there were games where he picked up the pitchers, picked up the rest of his offense. You know, no offense to Otani and Trout, but this is eight straight years of the Angels not making the playoffs. And it's not their fault. It's Artie Moreno's fault for running that team into the ground and not being able to put a roster together when you have two of the best players to literally ever play the game of baseball and you're Mm -hmm. wasting them. That drives me crazy. I know I'm a Yankee fan, but baseball no, right. baseball needs Shohei Otani and Mike Trout to be on national TV. And the only time you get to see them is during the All-Star game. Yep. It's ridiculous. It, it's going to take the Angels competing on a regular basis to get them. And by the time that happens, Shohei Otani might not be there. Um, right. <laughs> Aaron Judge is a free agent this year. Otani's a free agent next year. And so mm-hmm. no idea what's going to happen. Um, Stacy, if Locked on MLB Prospects listeners want to uh, follow the Yankees, follow you as you watch this chase for uh, the the Roger Maris record and everything. How can they uh, find your show, find you and follow you? You can find the show on YouTube at Locked on Yankees uh, on every podcasting platform available. You can find us on Twitter at Locked on Yankees and it's all one word. There's no weird underscores or anything like that. And if you want to follow me, I'm on Twitter at Stace Gotts, S-T-A-C-E-G-O-T-S because my full name is too long. (laughs) And for Locked On Yankees listeners, I'm on Twitter at Crosby Baseball. My show, Locked On Movie Prospects, is available wherever you get your podcasts and on YouTube. And if you have questions for us for the show, every Monday is a Mailbag Monday. We take exclusively questions from listeners of the show. You can send them to me or the show on Twitter, or you can email us, Prospects at gmail.com. Stacy, thank you for letting me give my mea culpa on Jason Dominguez. And I hope that you get a Triple Crown and a home run title and an MVP out of this season and hopefully a deep playoff run. Thank you. I would love that too.